Hey everyone and welcome back to Bridge Builders Academy. This is part two of the topic that we are covering biomedical science in the United States. If you have not seen part one, I will link down the video in the description box below for your reference. So in part one, we basically understood what the field is all about and what a researcher does in this particular field. In today's video, we are going to cover courses in India that are available courses in the United States, pay scale as a researcher, if you settle down as a researcher in the United States, the factors that the institutions look at when you apply for PhD, and this is applicable only for doctors, and the transferable skills of a doctor to a researcher, right? So um, which skills you can use while you have been in the medical or dental background, if you want to get into the research area, right? So this is what we are going to discuss in this video today. I hope this will help you to understand more about the field and how the applications are shortlisted. So let's hear what Dr. Satwik has to say about this. So uh, could you just guide on the terms that do we have courses in this field in India? If yes, then if you could just recommend some colleges. I think... See, these courses are available in India since long. Okay. Because when I was doing my plus one, plus two, I did think of biotech genetics. Mm. We take biotech genetics or BSc biotech genetics. These courses are available. The only thing is the amount of diversity in India is still on a lower case. Earlier, the PhDs were only the MTech or MSc grads. Now we see a lot of physician scientists. I don't compare all the dentists who have done have amazing research skills, but mm -hmm. they are really cool. Like one I said was Dr. Ranganathan, right? He has done his BDS. He has done his MDS. He has done MS oral biology back in Ohio State University and back PhD in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. So he also worked with dental pulpal stem cells. He worked with cornea regeneration. He, he is an exemplary uh, model where I can point out that there is a, a person who has done hardcore research. And I even know Dr. Suresh Rao. He's the first dentist to do a PhD in India. That's I great. think many are not even aware of. He earlier worked in SRM or SRMC, I guess. He's a periodontist. He's right now, uh, I think he's... Uh, moved out from uh, the institute and he is right now uh, a collaborative person with IIT metros or somewhere. Okay. So there are exemplary personalities who have done like hardcore research. But the thing is, the research is very, very less rewarded and not many people are known. Correct. It's at a very nascent stages. And recently only uh, DCI, you know, made it as a mandatory, mandatory thing that Every dental college should have a research component. I need so to one thing I say you. So I did my BDS, I did my master's, and I did my PhD. So if I come back, what is the job I would get in a dental school, you think? I yes. Not very sure. Maybe as a researcher in one of the departments in whichever area. I would be just a junior or a senior lecturer because I they consider only my BDS because other degrees are done in a completely advanced field or completely out of the box field. Like I myself now, I can call myself as a cardiovascular researcher because all my research is based on cardiac. Mm. Correct. But then I you improved can, a lot of skills. One can apply for, uh, in ICMR or any of these yeah. CFIR research. Those will be a better, better thing. But the dental school where I came from don't yeah. recognize things. Yes. Correct. We are still not... Uh, yeah, correct. So it requires. So even if somebody is looking for doing a PhD in India, I personally suggest look for physician scientists because they are slightly deviated from the regular field who are non-clinical. They have thought about it way before us. Correct. Obviously, right? If they are professors being a physician scientist, obviously they had a lot more experience than or their thought process was way ahead of us. So think for these labs, so they are okay for your uh, academic uh, transition. Yeah. They will be happy to help, I'm guessing. This is my guess. 
Correct. Definitely uh, that number has been increasing. So that's one thing I gave. And even there are universities. Uh, recently, I came across uh, some of the students on LinkedIn. So a lot of students do uh, connect me on LinkedIn and they like share things as well as. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, so they have done BDS and they're now doing uh, MTech at MIT or somewhere, I guess. Uh, so they do get a lot of mockery or made fun of. Even I faced in the initial stages. Ah research it's not well paid why do you want to jump into it yeah why don't you just sit in clinics so these were the lot of things which we feel even when i was in ccmb the thing is you already have a doctor degree why do you want to again move to research because for them uh phd is like it's the most noble noble profession in, uh, or the noble degree that anyone can get so they mean half of them do it only for a doctorate it, it's for those two letters. But that was not the case because I already had a doctor from India. Look, it's not a big thing for me. My aim was to gain experience or expertise. Yeah. So so these are the things uh, that at times lead to... So this is one of the my goal. So if I consider myself a failure or if I take a negative step, I personally feel like someone who is like at the beginning like me, would we again get the same mockery which I faced? I don't want that. So I still strive for that. Correct, correct. That's, so that's that is correct. one of my uh, biggest uh, uh, tasks which I have to pass through, I would say. Yes, yes, that's that's correct. And most of your LinkedIn post, uh, whenever I you know get across your LinkedIn post, I always share it with the student group or the... The, the other WhatsApp groups that we have with the students so that they can start applying. The recently, I think there was this competition where you had posted. Yeah, actually, one of the he is actually a reader from uh, Malaredi Dental School or somewhere, I guess, uh, from Andhra or Telangana. So he uh, like uh, initially connected and then shared me like, do you want to participate? I said like, see, I'm not working on oral biology at this point. And uh, I said like, I can share it because there are a lot of dental students or uh, dental fraternity who are being, I think even uh, there is another HOD. I like, uh, I know her from pretty while. She's an oral pathologist. Even she shared it with her uh, students. So it would be really helpful because that's a new opportunity. Yeah, it would improve the awareness. When I did my first undergrad conference, I was the second year. Then my intern said, this is the first time a second year student has been going to a conference. Correct. Then I personally recommended, they said there was a uh, uh, wax carving competition. I said, like, why don't you take first year students, sir? It would definitely benefit them and it would give a better awareness. Then at the same time, first years also joined our conference. I was really happy with such things. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I think this is very uh, something which encourages the students as well. This is, I think, which is very, very important. And it can help them to digress if they want to move away from the clinical aspect. Yeah. Of yeah. Because I took, I took uh, a turn and I tried to do it. Now, if anyone from my undergrad institute comes in that they want to do research in my field, they definitely suggest that why don't you talk to him? He might give you a better insight because this is what I wanted so that the students, ah, he tried that much and he failed. Why do you want to try? It's okay. Just stick with. So these are the things every student faces. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. So how, what is the process like uh, if I want to say apply for the MS program in biomedical science or directly can I do PhD in biomedical science in the US? Technically speaking, being a dentist and having a doctoral degree, you can even do a postdoc. Oh, okay. Many people are not aware because any, any doctoral course is subjected to being a postdoc. Like if MBBS student can do or MBS, MBBS grad can do, I can't a BDS grad. He can do in oral biology. He's already studied oral biology. Why right? he has to study the same thing? The only thing is he has to develop research skills. Then yes, he can good. He is good to go for a postdoc. But and what is your end goal? Do you want to land in a company mm -hmm. like where? You, because companies already always they pay a little higher. 
there is little less job security anywhere where the job security is little less obviously it gets higher pay and in academic it is very bad i would say or yeah worst <laughs> in better terms a small example uh like i have a, a friend of mine who is my uh batchmate from masters in us he's uh, he has done m farm and then he started doing masters he landed in a research assistant position because he had prior experience where i don't have so he could at least compensate his expenses simultaneously gaining research which i was not able to so usually during phd we have to do three rotations in order to decide our thesis lab i did three rotations in my masters because i don't have experience i wanted to gain whatever possible even a small technique yeah let me grab it so that was my uh, thing at that point so these are the things and both of us got into a phd program and almost like a weak weak difference we defended so almost everything happened in the same point correct so and uh, my undergrad friends most of them who moved to us are dentists mm -hmm. most of them are already practitioners uh, since uh, because everyone joined in masters at the same point maybe i joined uh, a semester later because i had the gap years on a higher scale compared to them and then uh, they graduated in 16 i graduated in 16 or they graduated little early all of us i got into phd they got into dental school in two years uh, they got their dental degree they started with a pay scale of 150000 but i graduated in 2022 <laughs> four years difference and by the time i started my postdoc which is even during phd you get stipend mm -hmm. but still it is like peanuts i would say so doing a postdoc i get like around 54000 now uh, there are a lot of uh, negotiations happening and they are trying to increase it over time in a couple of years like uh, most of the schools are trying to do it so probably i might get like 60000 in a year or so maybe my friends make more than 200000 yeah which is way big difference okay so i said you about my batchmate he moved to pharma company right after his graduation he makes around 90k to 100k so even there is a big difference from a postdoc to a uh, pharma company uh, scientist or a researcher so but still i chose this because i want to be into academics irrespective of my situation the only thing i pray daily is don't get me to a financial uh, burden situation where i had to change my path till now i'm happy uh, with my uh, parents uh, blessings as well as my wife support that i don't have any financial responsibilities completely like because that is very important for research if you want to earn money maybe academic position is not the right because it's very slow progressing unless until you become a professor like assistant professor like a academic position you don't get properly rewarded so all these things you have to think in mind uh, because uh, when you are doing a phd what is your long term goal is very important if you want to become an academic person your training should be more in that aspect okay. like uh, you need more publications because publications are one which state about your progress in the career if you want to land in a pharma company go to a lab which has lot of pharma collaboration so it will be easy for them to collaborate with them and just dive in yeah maybe i am going little uh, slow on the aspect uh, sorry about that but yeah it depends on these factors i would say correct correct if you really want to go to go for a pharma company job or industry job i would suggest even phd is not that required because they, so it is like a pyramid as soon as you go for higher degrees the number of positions are less yes. yeah definitely there will be a pay difference but is 5 years of your life worth in us the average phd grad life is 5 years okay especially uh, i know i recently got to know that people go europe because it's even faster like 3 to 4 years for phd even in india i think it is on a slightly higher side like 5 or 6 i would say yeah there are few people who can get it done in 4 years but it depends on what kind of research for example i work purely only on mice 
Mm. So you have to breed mice and if there are any gene models or you have to start a uh, like or uh, create a new model which takes several months because it is done from a gene facility, transgenic uh, mice facility. It depends on multiple factors. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. So just to compile everything, if somebody wants to pursue this course from the U.S., they can either go with the master's course and then depending on whether they want to get into academics or industry, they can right away start with the industry led. Yeah, uh, that would be better because they would prefer entry level positions. And even, for example, uh, like I'm giving you generalized. So there are many PhDs who are done in India and then they move here. So uh, they are like they come as postdocs. So when I'm a fresh PhD where my friend immediately move, they would prefer my friend because he's right away after his postdoc, like uh, after his PhD. But with others, it might slightly differ because the things are slightly different because they come here for vi with visa restrictions. Then they have to work on some other things. It's additional two to three years. So they gain their uh, experience. So their number of positions will be reduced okay. in the career. So, okay. yeah. That's, uh, that's and I would say if you have uh, research articles on your profile, go ahead with PhD. Okay. Don't even do a master's. Well, okay. Because those publications will state you. You need not have a first order publication. So my earlier mentor, I asked him, like, how do you, uh, like, he does a lot of interviews for the school, right? Uh, when they are taking in the PhD, what he looks for. I would say like, if he has a first order, I would feel he has developed the concept at least 50%. So he is an ideal student. Okay, he doesn't have that, but he has co-authored papers where his name is in third or fourth place. It means he knows at least one technique pertaining yeah. to research, which when we considered still. Correct. Those who don't have research experience also can be considered, but they have to prove that they have the ability to do a PhD. Most of the re like uh, interviewers, they look, why do you want to do a PhD? Mm. And lastly, I would say one more thing is uh, when I did my BDS, after my BDS, I thought like I already gained a lot of patience during my tenure and I know how to differentially diagnose the diseases. So these are my two skills, which will be useful for my research career. Because troubleshooting, which you call in research, is nothing but res uh, uh, differential diagnosis in clinics. Like, what are the multiple thoughts? For example, you saw a white lesion. What all possibilities are there? Similarly, in troubleshooting, okay, the experiment failed. What are the possibilities that made the experiment fail? Or what are the possibilities that made this experiment work? Like, to see that output. What are the possible genes or something or proteins that are involved in it? I after doing masters, I thought like PhD is like doing the same BDS twice. You require that much amount of patience. If you have that amount of patience, you will obviously develop it because I have seen people quitting PhD also. It's not easy. For example, if you got no as an answer, you have to prove that no three times. If you get S, yes, the same thing three times. At times, if you know that you're going to get an S, but you don't get an S, you have to keep trying. It can take months, weeks, or even a year. Correct. So you need that kind of a patience. Yes. And for a publication, at least from the basic science research, it takes several years. Mm -hmm. The publication from my master's, which is ended in 16, the publication came out in 17 and 19. Yeah, so, correct. Yes. So these are the things. Correct, correct. Yeah.